On this episode of the John 1911 podcast, we do things a little bit differently. We record live from the range at the new picnic shelter and insult just about everybody. So good afternoon, everybody. This is Marky and Freeze, and I don't know what episode this is. Uh, we're out at the range. We're sitting under the uh, picnic shelter, uh, bullshitting and uh, taking, a, taking a break. The, uh, brand new picnic tables. Brand new picnic. They're heavy, aren't they? And they are. They, they are let me, let me move this. If this makes a microphone noise, I apologize to everybody. This is going to be a uh, very, very linear, non, non-organized non podcast. We're sitting here just drinking water and should be drinking bourbon, but... Uh, no, I got to work tonight, so mm. um, no bourbon for me. And I don't drink, so... So, well, yeah, solves that problem. Yeah, I actually thought you were working this week, and I guess now you are, actually. Uh, so. Well, actually, let's see. I worked Wednesday... I'm working tonight, and then I actually start my work week on Monday. So it's like, uh, you know, yeah, you're a. I don't know what that zipper sounds like on podcast, but considering how bad the quality was of the last podcast, uh, I can't be any worse. Can't than be that. any was, worse it, than that. It was pretty damn bad. It was awful. So yeah. we've had a, uh, we've had uh, major server upgrades for the website, and we're working on some changes for the uh, podcast server as well. So yeah, Freeze is sitting here looking at the Red Nine. I like it. It's a nice gun. It is. I mean, you know, hey, it's hey, it's not a real red nine because you oh, know, sh- bite me. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's not a real red nine, and it's a repro rifle. You know, butt stock holster thingy, whatever. Um, hmm. This is probably the only podcast on the iTunes uh, store. That in theory we could actually live fire during the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Rifle range is right behind us. Yeah, that is true. That is so true. Yeah, I could take about a 525 yard shot from right here all day. Yeah, you could, and the listeners could even record the hits. Dong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. So uh, let's talk about. Uh, I put on the Facebook page t- this morning uh, a teaser. Oh yeah, I, go uh, ahead, open it up. I. Uh, I said uh, another another project off the workbench because last week you stopped by the house and said, "Oh, hey, I got a project for you." Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> give, I didn't even give Freeze a, 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 a an opportunity to uh, to uh, refuse because you know we picked up a police tr- trade in. Yeah, it's um, police surplus. It's, pill- it's I don't know. It, what do you call that? Po po plus? I ah, <laughs> But uh, basically, it belonged to some PD somewhere, and it's a Smith and Wesson uh, Model fifty nine oh six, and it was pretty roachy when you got it. We got it for nothing um, because it was rusted, which man, is hard to do because a fifty nine oh six is a stainless steel gun. <laughs> yeah, I mean the 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 sights. I mean anything that wasn't stainless basically was coated with rust. Matter of fact, when I took the magazine apart, the mm-hmm. uh, the Underneath the plastic floor plate, there's a metal plate with yeah. the detent ball. You yeah, know? holds it in place. And man, that thing was just corroded. Was it? Yeah, what, it was, was it? just it was crusty and flaky Re- with rust. Oh. Yeah, I cleaned it up. You know, so it's so, all good. That gun, it's there's probably, you know, we had a lot of people screaming about the pictures. You know, like they're so ashamed of long. You know, like cops that were ashamed well, like to see yeah, that. But it, knows, it probably was turned in wet then. Who who knows how long this thing stayed in storage before it was sold off? I mean, this yeah. thing this thing could have been bouncing around for ten years be- oh. since the last cop carried it. Oh, here's the thing. Look, you know I mean, these these companies that do um these companies that do the uh, like theoretically Glock or Sig will take a gun in trade. And then they um, they'll farm them out the back door, you know, to offset the price of yeah. you know the the price of the purchase for an apartment, and um, you know, look at the dots. The people the people on this that uh, you know that have these guns, if they're smart, because I don't really know how they operate. If they're smart, they would probably stagger the st- release the release of guns because yeah. if they just flood, you know, like you know. Flood the market, and you, I mean, like, 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 for example, we were going through, or you were going through this gun, and you actually think you found something to identify this as a New York Police Department gun. But the the question is, it's like there's thirty five to fifty thousand fifty thousand police officers in New York if you count the uh, Port Authority, thirty five, and then like another twelve or so. 
Well, if you dumped 50,000 5906s on the market, they're going to go for nothing. Yeah. So you're smart to hold them back. That's how Century does it. Yeah, sure. So, but you are you repainted these sites, huh? Well, yeah, well, when I looked at them, I thought they had um uh they're night no sites. they're no back sites, but I thought they had uh night site inserts, you know, tritium inserts. And they were pretty roached out and rusted. And um when I was cleaning them off, I found out they're they're not night sites, they're just basically painted three dot sites, and there was no paint left on them at all. So I did white on the two white dots on the rear and I did an orange on the front. Yeah, I brought some front sight paint to put on the front post of this and on the red nine and probably even the Glock because we're going to shoot those qualifications today. And, uh, you know, because I, I, you know, well, it's hooker, hooker fingernail polish. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll paint. Because you did the dot to make it look good, but to make it shootable, I'll, I'll paint that whole post. Yeah, well, that's fine. But, you know, I just, I, I wanted it for a minute to look good. So tell the <laughs> listener, tell the listener... <laughs> What you found, let me hand it to you. Okay, so. What you found on the gun when you took it apart. On, on the back spine of the magazine, when I was looking at it, it's got engraved um, three initials, HRC, and below that a number, 14265. I, I personally believe those are the initials of the officer, and that's his badge number. And a 14,000 badge number has got to be from a big force. You know, and like to my mind, there uh, fourteen thousand badge numbers or five a five digit badge number. That's either New York City, L A, L A, maybe Houston. I don't know Houston's numbers yeah. off the top of my head, but it's a big city. I don't know how many officers are in Chicago, but uh, you sure that's not Hillary Rodham Clinton? It could be. This could be Hillary's personal gun. This that, could be the murder. Weapon. This could be the uh, what's the what's dude? That, White was his last name White that got. That that accidentally shot himself in the back of the head? Oh no, I'm thinking of the lawyer that went out and shot himself in Lafayette Park. Oh, um, uh, uh, there's been so many of them, <laughs> <laughs> um, so many suicides. But um, but look, but the interesting thing is on, Vince Foster was Lafayette Vince Park. Foster, I knew yeah. it'd come to me. So I am a, this could I'm be a this this could be Vince Vince Foster's uh, murder weapon. <laughs> um, no, but but the interesting thing is on most like police guns and stuff like that when you have engravings it's just electro pencil engraving this engraving and when we post pictures of this on the website we'll get we'll get detailed pictures of the engraving this was professionally done by a jeweler or something because i mean this engraving is beautiful this is this would be the same type of engraving you would have on if you bought a piece of jewelry for your girlfriend and you wanted to engrave it i mean the the engraving on this is beautiful yeah, it's. I mean, it's. I don't know which like parallel lines. Yeah, or it's double like embossed or double something. double line. I mean, this was not electric pencil and stuff. I mean, this is good stuff. Yeah, and I, who would do that to a magazine? I hell, I don't know. I've never. I mean, but you know, maybe they get real bitchy. You know, officer had to buy his own mags. He's like, stop stealing my mags when I'm doing qualifications. Yeah, but uh, well, did you, when you did some research on this gun, the serial number that VCD. I went to Smith & Wesson's website where you can uh, put in uh, the serial number range, you know, to your gun. Oh, and it'll give you right. It'll give you the date of manufacture. And uh, what popped up was um, uh, this serial number cannot be, um, cannot be accessed from this database. Yeah, so, uh, no, so this is where we cut to the scene from Escape from New York when, the, when Air Force One's coming in and they're like, we've got an inbound plane, we lost radio contact. We've, uh, we looked up the, the, the tail number and it didn't come back. And it's like, uh, unregistered tail number. Yeah, you know, we tell X Washington, we're waiting to hear back and it says code David 14, decode Air Force One, Hillary Clinton. Yep. <laughs> It's got a magazine disconnect too. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you what: the inside, the guts of this gun are immaculate. The rifle, the barrel is. This gun has not been fired much. I mean, take a look at the breech face. I mean, it is it is in good shape. Yeah, that breech face doesn't look like it's been. The feed ramp looks good. The breech face looks really good. Oh man, check out that barrel. Let me get a flashlight. I mean, uh, I mean it. I mean that thing. And oh it, shit! My flash, you know what? My, my flashlight's dead. Yeah, well, cheap ass surefire. <laughs> like I, I, I had it rotated. It's apparently it was on in my pocket, so it's dead. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Look, I'm not a big fan of these Smith guns. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, 
of the, the of this particular style gun either. Plus, a, if you're not wearing gloves, your hands hamburger when you're done running this thing. Yeah, these but, things are rough. But you know, but I tell you what, it's a well made. It's gun. it's a well made gun, and it is so over engineered. It's incredible. I told you the the turmoil of taking the mag uh, the mag release button apart. Oh, that's just, it's like it looks like it's yeah, it's crazy looking. It looks like it's got one of those weird screws you'd see on like a French rifle, so they couldn't take their own guns down. Yeah. So it's, it's a it's a cool gun. So well, you know the magazine disconnect. I don't know if I've ever told this story. So let me be vague here. Uh, you know what? I'll, okay, I'll, I'll I'll share the other story for now. I okay. Two. I have two. I have two 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 quick stories. An old girlfriend of mine from a different life. Her issue weapon was this very gun. Okay. She actually had one of these, and uh, I remember being like, oh, no," and um. You know, it's fine. She wasn't really a gun person, so that's what they gave her, and that's what she carried. So sure, but um, you know, magazine disconnects are not the greatest. You know, for or against them, I'm generally not for them. But you can you can make an argument. Let me tell the listener: this is a story that happened that a major midwestern metropolitan police department many years ago, probably over two decades ago. So I can tell the story. It shouldn't shouldn't cause any trouble. So what did, have you ever heard the story? No, I don't think so. Or maybe, but so what? And I, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have detailed inside information on this story. So, okay, there was a at a at a local precinct. Uh, uh, they call them precincts. Yeah, precinct. Um, you know, they take prisoners in to maybe talk to detectives who know what they're going to do before they process them downtown. And uh, bad guy was in. You know, in a controlled area, and he succeeded in snatching a firearm from a police officer, a 5906, just like this yeah. one. And, you know, there's a big scrum and pig pile, and he manages to get the gun. And I don't know if he discharged around. I can't, I just can't remember. But he ended up retreating into a hallway. And, you know, he's armed. You know, they're going after him, and he's, you know, he's get away from me and he takes the gun he puts it up against his head and he's like get away or i'm gonna blow my brains out and they're just like fuck so you know fuck it's like i mean it's like it's terrible because now it's a it's a it's a standoff and they're gonna have to call like emergency services and this is gonna be a big giant who hoot nanny so this thing goes on for like six hours in this stairwell and um you know they got a negotiator talking to him and 5906, 15 plus one, or, yeah, it's 15, right? 15, yeah. 15 plus, uh, why does it have a zero at the bottom of it? Um, 15 plus one, and, uh, you know, they're like, hey, well, you know, you're getting hungry, you need to use the restroom. They're trying to negotiate with the guy, and he doesn't want to go to jail. He doesn't want to do all this stuff, and it's just, you know, whatever. And he's like, so they've been working with him and talking to him and like, look, you know, you know, building up a report. It's like, look, I understand, man. You know, but you gotta understand. You know, you seem like a good guy. You're just in a bad situation. You know, things happen. You know, we can get through this, and you know, everybody's all keyed up. And it's like, look, the problem is, you just want to take your own life. We know you don't want to hurt anybody, but you got 15 rounds in that gun. You got a whole magazine full of, uh, you know, full of ammo in that gun. And uh, he's like, why? You know, why don't we just like. Why don't you just show me some good faith and just look? You only need one bullet to kill yourself. Just give me the magazine. That would calm everybody down, calm the SWAT team down, calm you know everybody. Kind of relax. You 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 show you're really not trying to hurt anybody. You're not going to shoot up the police station. Just you know maybe maybe give me a mag. Meet me halfway. Just give me your magazine. You still got a gun. You still got ammo. You loaded. You're cool. Guy thinks about it. Thinks about the logic of it. They've been talking for a while, and you hear, takes the magazine out. Very slowly, he hands it over to the um, to the negotiator. And the cop has it in his hands, and he's looking down at it. And there's like a moment of silence. And he looks up at the guy next to him, and he's like, fucking get him. And they just, <laughs> whoa, shit, boom, 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 boom. And beat the crap out of him. It took, because it had a magazine disconnect. Yeah. And uh, mm, that is a true story. By that, by that negotiator of beer. Yeah. So that is my one example that I know of. And I think I know of a few others where there were a few fights when an officer felt like he was losing control of his gun and he was able to eject a magazine. Mm-hmm. I, I know of one that that actually happened. But um, this, this standoff with this, with this 
in this police department I I personally know quite well. So that I, that did happen. So it's not a, yeah. not a made up. Not like you know the magazine disconnect isn't a completely irrelevant or erroneous concept for um, all the guys on the gun forums that want to fucking be dickheads. About well, it. I mean, look, I'm not saying that the disconnect doesn't serve a purpose. Um, it does. Um, I personally um, don't care for them. Yeah, but you know, but that's okay. Um, these grips are plastic. Yeah, and. To, to remove them, you have to drive that pin out at the bottom. Oh, that's not a uh, that's not a high survivability part. Um, well, it's a steel pin. I know, but the magazines are or the the grips are plastic. Yeah. Well, then what you got to do is you have to you know you dump the mag, you drive that pin out, then you have to grab it like this, push down on the back because the mainspring. Oh shit! Push down on the back, pop it out, and it'll come out a few degrees. Then you have to pry the sides of the plastic grip apart to free the uh, magwell, and then it slides right off. Dude, and that's that's like eight <laughs> degrees of crazy. Well, okay, let me tell you something. You know, I mean, I'm pretty good at you know doing shit like this because it's what I do, and. Man, I haven't messed with, uh, you know, any of these, you know, like the 4000, the 5900 series. I haven't messed with any of these guns for probably 20 years. Yeah. And I get the pin out and I'm like, I can't get the, I can't get the grip off. And I'm like, what the hell? Did you have to look it up on the internet? I, I did. I had to look it up on the internet. Actually, I went to YouTube. Because <laughs> I'm like, I know I've had these things apart before. It's like, how the hell did I do that? Oh, man. And then it was like. And then after I, I mean, I watched literally like 30 seconds of the video. I didn't watch the whole video. It's like, oh, crap. Okay, yeah, I remember. You yeah. know, I, but it's just like, damn. I just, I, I couldn't remember how to get it apart, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, well, I mean, it's another example of, I mean, just look at how complicated and how expensive it is to make that gun and then look at a Glock. Oh. A Glock 17 is so simple. Yeah. And here's the thing. There's less to go wrong in a Glock. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, I use the I use the analogy of, like, the Indy 500 race car series. Like, you know, any gun, 1911, Smith & Wesson, they can all be great guns. But one of the things you have to, you have to keep in mind is it's not just the gun and it's not just how well it operates, but it's how often it has to come in for a pit stop. Well, you can be the baddest-ass car at the Indy 500, but if you got to come in for gas and tires eight times more than everybody else, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Yeah. And that's an example of where the Glock wins. And people don't really want to see it that way. No, it's, it's absolutely true. This gun is so well built and it is so over-engineered. But with that being said, it makes it a fantastic gun. But it also, the you know, when you have a gun that has, you know, 150 moving parts and springs opposed to a gun that's got 30, well, you know... That's 120 more things Does that can go wrong. Does the Glock actually even have 30 guns? No, I, I don't know. Um, I bet it. If I bet it's somewhere. Ah, it probably, it's probably right around there. I mean, look, you know, this gun, like, what, we pay 200 bucks for this? Yes. God, some, I don't know. It was. It was so I rusty, mean, nobody yeah, wanted it. You, you and were, it was like, when, hey, when, when we you got free. When, when, you, when you bought it, it was like, oh, I, I, I bought a, I got a really good deal on a Smith Wesson 5906. And I went, yeah, whatever. Because, I mean, that's exactly what I felt about the 5906. Yeah, whatever. And it's like, good armory piece. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it is. is. It is cool. Um, good reference piece for the armory, you know. And it's 9 millimeter, which, you know, works for us. And um, and and I promptly at that point forgot about it till all of Did. a sudden you show up and go, oh, here's a project for you. And I'm yeah. like, really? Yeah, and literally. I, I called Freeze, and it wasn't like an hour later. I'm in his driveway. Here, you need to fucking fix this. <laughs> and And I looked at it, and I'm like, holy crap, that thing is a dog man that thing was whipped well that's I've the never, thing i didn't want I've to spend never, 400 500 bucks on one of these no, and, and you sh- and you shouldn't but i'll tell you what for a stainless gun this thing was in really deplorable condition externally yeah. internally man the thing's mint we did good and so but this gun has i bet this gun hasn't had 500 rounds fired through it see the th- i you know what the thing is i it may it might have yeah maybe i mean it hasn't had it hasn't had it hasn't had 5000 I bet it hasn't had a thousand. I, I would, in, I would internally. Be, I would be willing to bet you it hasn't had a thousand. I would, I would, I would agree with you on that. 
most most police department guns are. You know, like I mean, no 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 offense, but we're supposed to have some some people out here today, but. One guy's like, well, you know, and it come out, you know, whatever. Another guy, well, one guy. Now, wait a minute. One guy had to go in for stents. So okay, <laughs> we'll let him okay. slide. The guy that's getting heart surgery is is gets a pass. But look, cops don't shoot. They generally don't, and, unless they're and, on the. And, this, and, but the look, cops that do join the SWAT team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. Um, but I mean, how many cops do I know? How many cops do you know? How many cops do we associate with on a daily basis? Man, most of them aren't shooters. And that's what I mean when I say cops don't shoot. You know, um, I can name literally a dozen cops off the top of my head that the only time they shoot their weapon is when they have to qualify. Yeah, we're supposed to shoot the Indiana State qualifications today, and we will. We'll, we'll do it. And we'll, we'll, there's another deputy we're going to call here, see if he wants to swing by after we do this podcast. But, uh, yeah, so um, let's change gears here. Yeah. Let's talk about that Red 9 real quick. So okay. show me this. Let me see the stripper clip. I got more of them in my in my briefcase. So, stripper clip, mm-hmm. and they're uh, you know it looks actually kind of like a uh, M16 stripper clip. Kind of actually, shorter. DWM, mm-hmm. they're all DWM. Mm-hmm. They match which is, the gun. Which is good. Now give me the holster. This is an ex- I'm sorry, the actual oh, the, man, the yeah. holster holster, not the oh, not the stock. Gotcha. So. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm holding up a stripper clip for a Red 9 for the one we've talked about with the Repro stock and the Repro repro holster. And <laughs> look at that. The, um, the, the, um, the stripper clip is does not fit in the pouch that's on the, uh, on the side of the holster. So if you had one loaded stripper clip and you put it in there, um, you would not be able to fold over the pouch – to keep your stripper clip. Yeah, do you put you put yeah, that's stripper it. clips? You no, put no, loaded. no. You put loaded ones in there. Just it goes down sideways like that, so you get one loaded stripper clip mm-hmm. in there. That wouldn't but fit. It don't fit because when uh, what when uh, Ching Chong or whatever Chinese dude, dude made stop this, it. stop, stop. <laughs> I'm not editing. I am not going to save your ass. Okay. Okay. <laughs> what are you, Dave motherfucking Chappelle? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they did not get the measurements right, um, and it's too short. I wonder if I'm going. I'd, I'd like to now see if a real uh, Red Nine, real real Prussian, a real Prussian. You know, it's like right now that guy, that one fucking guy, is going to be insufferable. Uh, um, but here's here's another thing. I would bet on an original one. See how this is stitched off to, on the edge. I bet it's parallel. I bet that's off stitched. Oh, again, okay. He's, again, he's showing. Uh, there's a cleaning. There's a cleaning rod uh, stuffed into the side of this thing, and so well, you know, it'd be interesting to look at a real one that we can verify as a real yeah. one and just visually tell. Mm-hmm. And so, well, well, tell a story you were telling me about your buddies. Okay. Well, back in the '90s, when I was real big into military collecting, and you could actually buy real military stuff at a, an affordable price before you know everything got crazy. Anytime a company like IMA or Sturm or anything like that came out with a repro item, we would buy them. We, we, not, not to buy them to have, but we'd buy them just so we could hold them, feel them, and, and look at them. Because what happens is back then, you know, and this was in the 90s, so the internet wasn't like it is today. Um, everyone went to big gun shows. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when you go to a gun show, and the example uh, I used was like a Japanese uh, rifle sling. Well, you know, original ones are few and far between, and the ones that are original are usually in such deplorable condition. It's a showcase. It's a showcase item. So when you you buy a repro one, when someone comes out with one, so you can look at the stitching, you can count the stitching on it, you can look at the uh, fasteners, the can you know you can look at everything on it. So when you go to a gun show and you see some guys trying to sell an original Japanese sling for two hundred bucks, when a repro's ten bucks, and they've assed um, it up to make and it they, look old, they've whipped it up and and fake aged it to look old. You can look at it and go, oh yeah, no, that's an IMA repro that's been assed up, you know, but. That's basically how you don't lose a lot of money buying fake shit. Yeah. You know. Um, the liar's table at the gun show. Yeah, basically. So we would we would quite often, and as a matter of fact, I'm familiar with this repro holster for the Red 9 because I've seen many of them over the years. 
And I mean, obviously, I mean, when we when you were looking at this on auction, uh, the first thing I told you is, well, the first two things, including the guy that's going to hammer us, who already hammered us hey, on the red news, nine. News flash: I banned him. He just doesn't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's so, called shadow banning. <laughs> Sorry. So, I mean, the the first thing I told you when you showed it to me is is it's a repro rifle stock holster, and it's not a real red nine. Well, I mean, you know, you know I yeah. told you. I mean, we knew that going it in. It should be obvious because it's like brand new leather, and brand, yeah. I mean, it looks it looks like it just well, came but, out of a showroom. But in all fairness, I got to point these things out to you because that's my job. Um, I think I think what he really just said is he thinks I'm retarded. <laughs> you're just not up on all the mill shit. Uh, that is true. You know what? I kind of lose like. I'm a type collector, not a not a variant collector. Yeah. So, like to me, like but, Enfield rifles, it's like whatever. They're all the same. Yeah. Um, but but for our intense purposes, we wanted a broom handled Mauser. We wanted one in nine millimeter, mm-hmm. and having the rifle stock holster is just a freaking bonus because if we could have got one without it at a decent price, we would have. Yeah, and, but, and bought this bought yeah. bought this exact repro stock. Yeah, but. The price we got this for, and I don't even recall what the hell it was, to be honest with you, was was I mean, obviously at what we bought for bought it for, we knew it wasn't a real red nine. I mean you just would, by the, five grand. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But we got it at such a good buy, it was like, man, you know what? This is the piece we need for the reference library. Well, and the thing is, like, we're going to shoot it today on the plate rack. Mm-hmm. Like, we will shoot this today. Yep. And it's like if we break a part on it or we break the stock or split something, we'd all of a sudden we lost $1,500 in value. That's why it's been refinished. It's got all these problems. Well, but it's for a us, Chinese it's, import, first yeah. off. And from a collector's point of view, that hurts it, you know. So. See, I don't – that's where I think collectors are kind of kind Dickish. of goofy. Yeah. Well, because here's the thing. It's, an, it's yeah. not a Chinese made. No, it's not. And – but, See, and I think that's a confusion. See, I think a lot of people, and not that I'm up on the uh, Mausers, on these Red 9s and C96s, but I think there's people get their wires crossed. Oh, you don't want a Chinese broom handle. But it's like the ones you don't want are the ones that were made in China by yeah. Ching Chong. Jesus Christ. <laughs> by Ching Chong. <laughs> there's going to be a guy. I hope there's a guy out there named Mr. Ching or Mr. Chong. <laughs> That's like the sweetest, nicest guy. It's going to make us look like dick faces. Yeah, probably. And you know what? He'll write for the blog now. That's and, right. um um, you know, because this is an actual German-made German made gun, so yeah. it's got German quality. I it's mean, not like – it's not made out of pot metal that's going to hit you in your face. No, 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 no. I which mean, is the is, which is the real fear of a Chinese-made – Chinese-made yeah, – Yeah, no. I mean, look, th- this, is, this is a German gun. It's a Mauser. Um, it was exported to China at some time in its life. Then Probably it was, in the – 30s maybe it could be 20s yeah. when did they all go to china when was yeah. the was it 30s. during the during the warlord yeah it was, it was bef- like around the 30s and stuff maybe the 20s yeah, it could be but um but you know and then it was brought back and it sometime in its life it was converted to nine millimeter and refinished and you can see the pitting where you know the original pitting where it was blued over yeah and um and and that's great that's what we want because we don't want a five thousand dollar red nine out use, here shooting yeah. its plate rack. Yeah, I'm I mean, not. I have no problem with a five thousand I mean, dollar you know gun, what? but it better oh, be. It better be well, a machine what? gun. I just left. Uh, I just left a fingerprint on this gun. Now, if this was a red nine, we wouldn't be leaving fingerprints on it now, yeah, would we? No. <laughs> Look, I mean, it is what it is. It's a nice reference piece. Um, uh, who doesn't like broom handled Mausers? I mean, it's nine millimeter, which which is good because thirty Mauser sucks. Well, the thing is, I have a thousand rounds of nine millimeter in a truck at any given time. Yeah. There's a thousand. I mean, I don't have. Well, I, you know. Oh, yeah. hey, did you bring the? Did you bring the red? Did you bring the C ninety six? Yeah. Oh fuck, I forgot the ammo. Oh, That's I forgot. Cool. I forgot the one and a half boxes of ammo yeah, we have like, in the yeah, armory. I don't, I don't need that. Crap. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just like with uh, you know going back to the Steyr Han. You know, again, it's nine millimeter. Obviously, the Germans agreed they converted to nine millimeter too. <laughs> yeah, but again, what the hell? What, and what's the original caliber on the Steyr? Huh? Nine, nine, nine millimeter nine, Steyr. Nine millimeter Steyr. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's a nine by twenty three type. Yeah, I mean, who the cal- hell? Who the hell wants to support that crap? You know. I mean, it's like, no, we want a 9mm style. PPU makes it, but I think they make it like once every couple years in a lot. Uh, they get enough back order, then they make it. It's like, so you could, it's like, you know, who could go whatever. 
Um, hey, uh, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, uh, this is a, uh, change of subject, but it's about, you know how we decided to, um, do this and John 1911 and our own website because we're independent. We're not doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. This, this story happened, this happened this, this week and it doesn't directly, it doesn't affect us at all, but I'm telling you, it is a sign of things to come. So did you hear about um, YouTube had problems with, I guess there's all these pedophiles in the comment sections of videos. So like there's okay, there's no. videos on on YouTube that are yeah. like kid videos. When I say kid videos, it's like little kids playing with toys or – Yeah, yeah, sure. A family uh, – uh, uh, maybe like some family's got a cute – Child filming and, a birthday party, and it's and but they like you know, like they do like vlogs of their stuff, so there's all these little kids. Well, apparently, there's these sickos get in there and they're like, they're really not there to see how cute the birthday party is, they're see how cute little Johnny is, or something. Oh, so, shit. Okay. but apparently, they're, they're like all these different code words they leave in comments and they're finding each other in the comments. So, what YouTube did like a month or two ago, they disabled comments on any children child related video on YouTube which okay. hurts your interaction hurts your traffic as you yeah. you know and so and there's the, a lot of these these kids channels they make big money they're family channels mm -hmm. so they disabled the comments and it was like you know cuz they really got hammered on this advertising with pedof it's like pedophiles Kroger doesn't want to advertise IBM doesn't want to advertise sure well i get that they're apparently YouTube is mulling over the possibility of removing all children's comment off of the platform just so they can keep the pedophiles off the platform. So, okay, this is the first time hearing of this, but my question is, is it that big of a problem or is it a case of YouTube going overboard because there is a small issue and they're, you know, they're... They're killing the fatted calf because the calf has a boil. I mean, it, it depends on whose perspective you're looking at it from. If you're a family, you're, I don't know, I got to make up one. I thought that I would know one to cite. Like, I don't know, Swiss Family Robinson. And okay. you've got some YouTube channel with 100,000 to 4 million subscribers. Okay. And you, have, you monetize, you sell ads. Yeah. And the thing is, they're not restricted like we are. So Toyota and Coca-Cola and all these people. Yeah. So you're watching these videos, Little Johnny, there's Toyota commercials, and there's all these pedophiles, you know, making comments like, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't want to do it. So, you know, if you nuke, if you nuke the, ch the kids' channel – Swiss Family Robinson is – that's killing the goose that laid the golden egg. But the YouTube that's making billions, it's a penny. Why fucking even have it? And here's my point. If they're going to do it to the kid channels, they're going to do it to the gun channels. I have news for you, everybody. Oh. It's over. It's – it's – if they if they do this, if they, if they wipe out all the little Johnny kids and – Look, w wipe these people out. And it doesn't. Gun channels are gone. It doesn't take much for YouTube to uh, to to hammer a gun channel. I mean, you know, so maybe the pet maybe there is enough pedophile issues on the kids' channels to be a problem. I don't know. Um, apparently, YouTube thinks so. Um, but okay, so using a number, say there's a hundred pedophiles on the kids' channel. And they're nuking uh, the comments. Well, dude, all it takes is one pedophile on a gun channel to just nuke the gun channels, not the comments, the entire fucking channel. I mean, because, you know, YouTube is not friendly to any type of a yeah, gun channel. Yeah, I mean, they're whatsoever. like you wouldn't see pedophiles on a gun channel. But the argument is, you know, what ha what's happening is I can't imagine this is a huge problem. But I don't know, like how many pedophiles. I mean, it's okay. They, well, but you see, they're not going to nuke the gun channels from pedophiles. What they're going to do is someone's going to go in there and go, "Oh, I'd have blown his fucking head off." And it's like, "Oh, you're an extremist." Yeah. So now they're going to delete all the comments because of the extremists. Well, no, they delete the comments. No, they're going to they're going to delete the channels. Yeah. Because what they'll do is it'll be it's not worth it. They'll and yeah. and actually, I mean, this sounds. I hate to say it like this. I mean, I kind of hope it happens. 
because it'd be good for us. It's good for us because we're not dependent on we're small, but we're not not I would I don't I'm wishing this on other people, but we started from the ground up to be totally we can't touch us. Hey, we went, as we're sitting at our own range with we, our own website and we, our own servers. We went from a successful t-shirt business where we were making money to where all of a sudden one day we just said, "You know what? Shut it down." Well, and we weren't, you know, and there's more to it than that, but we made a decision to put ourselves out of business. Want some yeah. more water? Yes, please. To put, you want some Gatorade? Uh, yeah, actually, I would. Yeah, yeah got some fancy blue Gatorade oh, thank from you. staff. I like blue. Um, it's my favorite. Color. I got red one too. No, I'll take the blue. Um, we decided it's this, better to make. This, this could be about 15 degrees colder, though. By the way, there's no ice in here. It's from yesterday oh, when okay. I was out here by myself working, and somebody else wasn't out here working. Um, <laughs> you know, we made a decision to put ourselves out of business yes. because it's better to put put yourself out of business than have YouTube or Facebook <coughs> or well, WooCommerce again or we somebody s- do it for us. We saw the writing on the wall, and um, and. All these channels that get whacked. I mean, I, what is it? About a year ago, they were whacking these channels, and everyone was going to Pornhub and all that shit. Well, we saw that. We fucking, saw that, that didn't fucking work. No, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't work at all. Yeah. But my point is, we saw that writing on the wall two years prior to that, and we decided to mm, longer than that. Well, yeah, but I mean, we decided to nuke ourselves mm-hmm. and start over from scratch, and. You know, all these people that are having all these trouble, all these issues with YouTube, like like you see all these prominent YouTubers that have nothing to do with like our industry, but they're huge. And and a lot of them complain about YouTube and YouTube sucks and no, they don't understand and all this stuff. And it's interesting to watch these people go through this grieving process where the rest of us, like the gun channels, the gun community, we were getting hammered by social media in 2012. Oh, yeah. In 2011, we were getting hammered hammered remember like facebook used to do crazy bullshit to us oh my god facebook was facebook, terrible facebook abused us big time and that's what that's what made us decide we were too facebook dependent yeah and we decided we could come in one day and facebook we don't have a facebook page anymore and uh, we're out of business and it's like we can't do this anymore we have to get off this platform well, I mean, there were actually a couple times where uh, we got we got well let's see we were banned for it starts out with a day and then, did, did you get a thirty day? I got a thirty day. I don't think I ever got. I a think 30 day. you got a week or something like. I that. I did get a week. I got a thirty day ban. So, so we've got a Facebook business page that our business is pretty at that time was dependent upon, and I've got a thirty day freaking ban. You know, yeah. it's well, like we built the t shirt business through Facebook, yes. which was where everybody was, and that was a smart move. While I was making money, but in hindsight, in hindsight. You know, that was probably not the smartest move because if we had those years back to put how much money we spent on that, you know, to put that into John 1911. Uh, That would have went a hell of a long – actually, you know what? That would have paid for this range. That would have paid for this range. Uh Seriously. And people out there might might not – might go, wow, really? Yeah, really. The money we put into Facebook – would have would have built this range. We used to spend twenty five thousand dollars a year in advertising on Facebook. Yeah, that's a real number. I can prove it's documented. That, that, oh, that is not a fake yeah. number. Yeah, the, IRS, the, IRS, the I, trust me, the IRS wanted to see that number. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? The IRS knows we spent that. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, yeah, and there's no like, you know, cash under the table, whatever bullshit with Facebook. It's all credit card. Yep. 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 All it's, electronic it's, payments. It's all there. You know? So I just thought that was something that was kind of interesting. Oh, uh, it is interesting though. Well, I forgot to tell you because there's a story that happened, and it reminds me of another thing I wanted to tell you. So, uh, did you hear about the um, you know the ATF office in where are they in where are they in West Virginia? The one that does the technical branch where they they do a lot of destruction of guns. Mm-hmm. It's in wheel. I don't, where is it? Uh, Morgan. Martinsburg. 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 Okay. Morgan. You were close. Yeah. And um. So apparently they do, they do destruction of uh, of guns, okay. seize, and they even destroy government and ATF guns. Like some agent he retires, yeah. whatever they they destroy the gun, which I think sucks, but whatever. Well, apparently, some guy they hired destroy guns. Oh no! Yes! No! Yes! Nice! <laughs> Check this out, Wall Street Journal. <laughs> 
Sved search for weapons stolen from ATF facility. A contractor has been accused of stealing gun parts and firearms, some of them still missing. Federal agents around the country are scrambling to recover uh, gun parts, ammunition, and firearms that were stolen from a government disposal site, officials said. Basically, long story short, this guy, what he was doing, Christopher Yates, what he was doing is he was supposed to destroy guns. And I think what he started off doing is he would, quote, destroy the gun, and, but, he, and but he would take the slide. Where do you think all these Glock parts kits yeah, have been coming yeah. from? and he would take the parts off the guns, yes, okay. and then he would drive around to, like, Maryland and all these places within driving distance of Martinsburg, and he would sell them. Nice. And that's where all these parts were coming from. And then at some point, <laughs> he maybe possibly decided, you eh, slide a few frames in there. So what happened was, the way the story's written is apparently nice. is apparently um um oh, by the way this story is going to end positively for the ATF just trust me um apparently there was a traffic stop maybe in Pennsylvania so not everything's not that crazy far from Martinsburg yeah, it's so. kind of like geographical mm -hmm. and they found the dude with a gun and he had a slide or a barrel possibly off a sig but it had some kind of marking on it that they were able to figure out that should have been to an ATF gun, and they figured they were like, our records say that gun was destroyed. How did he get that slide? And that's what started it. They didn't even find stolen guns. They found a part, which in theory is kind of – I mean it's not – it's not a – it's stolen property, but it's not a – Firearms violation. Yeah, well, you know what though, if he's if he's a contractor uh, design who, who's supposed to destroy all these, yeah, it's a firearms violation. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, the ATF. See, let me let me reach out to the government agency that decides what we to do with firearms. Oh, the one you stole from? Yeah. <laughs> so, so when your lawyer is is arguing the fact that it's not a uh, firearms violation violation. Um, you're still going to prison, and you need a new lawyer. Yeah, you're. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but you know, yeah, because there had to be some kind of marking. Because I mean, you know, usually they're not serialized or anything like that. Well, it depends on the gun yeah, too. Like but, SIGs could be German SIGs, and those can be marked top and bottom because you know how the Germans yeah. are. They do all kinds mm -hmm. of shit, and a lot of them. A lot of like German stuff in particular, like the barrels are serialized. Because like a lot of countries, people don't realize that in the U.S., barrels are not controlled items. But like in Israel. You get caught with a barrel that you're not supposed to have. That's a firearms violation. It's 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 different. Like you yeah, know, different laws, we, different countries. We're pretty lax on barrels, but we're real dickheads about receivers. Like mm -hmm. a machine gun receiver is always a machine gun receiver. Mm -hmm. If it's capable of being made a machine gun, was ever a machine gun, it's always a machine gun. Whereas in Europe, if it's a machine gun receiver and you just put a little well tax something and it, the selector doesn't go to doesn't go to full auto, it's a semi auto, yeah. and that's the way it is in a lot of Europe and in Russia and, yeah. and places like that. So. But, you know, so a lot of people are like, ha ha, ATF, ban the ATF, ban the ATF, yeah, whatever. whatever. So, but I'm going to tell, tell a good story. I don't know if I told you this. We can't talk about the project. The, the project's not going to happen. Did I tell you I was on the phone with the ATF until like 1030 at night on Friday? You did. I was. So, so we, had the, we have, we have a, a project we were working on that's not – we're going to put it on the back burner for now. And I, I, I want to tell the story because it's I, it, it's so it re, it's so well it's it reflects so well in the ATF, and I'm not I'm not being facetious I'm I'm seriously impressed, and this this project involves different ATF district offices and so it's different different agents mm -hmm. from different different field offices so there's a lot of like phone tag back and forth and whatever, so this woman I, I would like to name her but I, I don't feel like I should. She yeah don't she um she was getting back to me and she was getting back to me because she got backed up and I think she'd been <laughs> out of town and she was contacting me at ten thirty ten o'clock to ten thirty I had to get her off the phone at ten thirty on a Friday night I felt so bad that she was talking to me I was like you know you we can just do this on Monday I'm sorry you're calling me on a Friday night. But you know the project was so interesting and weird, yeah. Because you know that's how that's how I roll. And um, <laughs> so but uh, but I was like, kudos to the ATF that this woman. I was so impressed. I was so impressed with her that I actually will probably make future decisions that will guarantee she's our ATF agent. Well, because I was so know, impressed by her. Every time <clears throat> I have ever interacted with the ATF, 
I've come away with a positive experience. Mm-hmm. I've never had a negative experience. I haven't either. ATF. I mean, you know, um, I mean. No, we can disagree, agree to disagree on stuff. Oh, no, look, I'm not saying the ATF is perfect. I'm and not I'm saying, not saying that I, I agree with a lot of stuff they do. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, I have an FFL um, and the – and I'm going to say limited amount of times I've dealt with the ATF because I don't really have to deal with them a lot. But every time I've ever interacted with them in any way, shape, or form, it's been a positive experience. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've never had, I've never hung up the phone mad and going, fuck that motherfucker. You know, <laughs> yeah. no. It's, it's just like, oh, cool. And, you know, I just don't think they get enough, um, I don't think they get enough, um, enough, uh, they don't get enough credit when they do stuff good, yeah. right, or positive. And I just felt like, you know, well, and, yeah. she, and here's the thing she does not know about John 1911. She doesn't know about, like, who we are. Yeah. She has no clue. Yeah, I was just a crazy which, guy which, with this. Which, which, which could be a good thing. Could be a good thing. Yeah, yeah that's a, yeah, yeah. Um, no. But you know, um, we're still kind of dating. We don't really know each other that well yeah. yet. You know, it, it's yeah, it, it's one of those things where um, the ATF gets a bad rap because they have to enforce bad laws. Yep. That they're not responsible for. Sorry if you hear it thumping. Yeah, don't, me. don't don't tap the table. <laughs> um, but they have to enforce bad laws that they didn't create. Yeah, you know, so they're they're the ones that you know get holding get holding the bag. As well, they say, in today's you know? in today's political environment, and this is true on the right and the left, and you're seeing it now in the current in the current 2020 election season. Like today, there's a big drama with Joe Biden because. Joe Biden talked about how he got along with segregationist senators in the 70s. Joe Biden's been a senator for 50 years. And, you know, he got he joined the Senate, I think, in what, 1972? And it's like, you know, yeah, there were all these cracker guys from the 50s. and you know, So imagine a guy that's been in the Senate for 50 years in 1972 yeah. when Joe Biden's a freshman senator. And it's like – Yeah, I mean the, 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 the and, guy that's been a 50-year senator still has his uh, Confederate uniform hanging in his closet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? But that's kind of the yeah, truth. Yeah. And the thing is the Senate, they kind of – the idea in, with the Senate – a lot of people don't want to admit this on the right too – is you know, and this is where I have to give a little bit of def- defense to John McCain, as much as it pains my heart, because <laughs> John fucking McCain. But um, <laughs> but the Senate was always a place where you had cloture rules. You have to have sixty votes, not fifty-one. So you can't get anything done unless you make deals with people that you may vehemently disagree with. And so you have to get along with people that maybe you don't agree with or you have views yes. that you don't agree with. And it was a sign of respect and um, success that you were a politician that could work in that environment. And yeah. and Joe Biden was very proud of himself for that. And now AOC and all these people, they want to kill him. But it's the same thing like when you're talking like the ATF. It's like, you know, oh, you talk to the ATF, make sure they don't shoot your dog. It's like, I get it. I get it, dude. But that doesn't do anybody any fucking good. Yeah. You know, this woman did not shoot anybody's fucking dog. She bent over backwards yeah. on a Friday night to talk to me. Somebody did ask if she was interested, but I, I was like, no. Um, but, um, you know, and I was just so – I was like – I just thought that was a positive story that should be told. Oh, but uh, you didn't mention you have a dog either, though, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, by the way, um, I did. I did extend an offer to her, to her, to her uh, field office, that if they want to come out here and train on our facility, since we have the other groups that are coming out here. Oh, great! The ATF's going to come out. We just lost fifty thousand viewers. Fuck. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's like, why not? Come on. I mean, I hey, like, no, seriously. I'd love to. Ha- I personally, I wouldn't have offered it if I wouldn't love. I would love to have the ATF out here. Oh, if because yeah. they could come here and do what they need to do. They don't have to give any anybody give them the stink eye. If they make a mistake, See, you if, know they, what, if, you, if they if they drop a drill. They're safe here. No one's ever going. We're not going to talk about it on a podcast. But you know the best the the best thing about having the ATF out here is at the end of the day when when everyone's done and we're packing up the gear, 
if you listen carefully, someone will be on their phone going, yeah, you can redirect the satellites to another location. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll stop seeing those military helicopters fly over. Uh, you know, I, I can't – when we were had the D8, when we had the D-8 dozer out here, and we were trying to figure out shooting azimuth to figure out the rifle range because it's mm-hmm. so hilly. Yeah. You get turned around back there. I actually contacted a company about paying for satellite time. Yeah. And I was like, fuck you. I was <laughs> like, I'd rather just pay – I'd rather pay a quarter of that and just have the D8 dozer guy drive around <laughs> until he – you know, until he pops out somewhere and goes, found it. And I'm like, guess what? We now have we now have ATV trails. It's like, no, I'm not, no. It's like, you, what the fuck? You guys think I bought rain here? I'm not going to pay that to, to, to get a satellite picture of, of the range because it was going to be daily, co- every day, a new picture, a new picture, a new picture every day to show that we were going in the right direction. But what they wanted, I was like, I was like, nope, nope, nope. Nope, oh. not going to do that. Don't have that kind of funds. I mean, I mean, you know, at some point you just gotta you gotta fucking stop the madness. Yeah, it's been mad. Well, look, you know, having the D eight pop out and Gwen saying I found it did create a lot of ATV trails, and that's and that's good too. Well, we had a we had a guy out here. He's a very smart guy, and he's a f- pilot PhD dude. And uh, there was a there was a project, and I was like, okay, here's what I want you to do. I just want you to go that way. And so what we did is we we checked it we uh, we we you know with, with uh, compasses and azimuth, and we and we and we got him set up with a compass because you get and it's so hilly in that big ass dozer, and basically just keep going that way and I'll be damned if he came right out where right where I wanted him to be it worked you know yeah. huh, you know what do you know math works <laughs> <laughs> well and it wasn't Common Core math either was it no so <laughs> hey, the Earth isn't flat and like a pain didn't fall off the edge of the planet so oh God I'll tell you what <sighs> two people I like to listen to when I'm when I'm out in the garage screwing around I'll put on uh, YouTube and uh, listen to videos. Nothing fancy? Well, no, no, I don't. I don't listen to nothing fancy anymore because I really don't give a shit about watches. Uh yeah, and motorcycles. That's a YouTube thing. Like I, no, it, it's I, knives, I it. watches, and 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 motorcycles. Yeah, and and I get it. I, I get it. It's I, I'm not I'm not shitting on nothing fancy. I I've, I've been a fan for many years. Back back in the days when I was slaving away at the press, he was generally on my computer because I like. 50 minute videos. Yes, yeah, so you could listen to them while you're making shirts and yeah, putting orders. Yeah. You know, and I don't have to stop every 15 minutes, you know. But anyway, I forgot about the watch thing. Um uh I love listening to videos of flat earthers and I love No. I do. And I love listening to videos of sovereign citizens. Oh god. Dude, I you're do. shitting me. I am not because I've never seen a sovereign citizen so, come okay. out Ahead, okay, you know, because it's just like I, I. They're the worst. Oh, they are. It's like I do not consent. Like any cop is going to be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> oh, you don't consent." Let me get back in my cruiser and let you go on your way, <laughs> dude. Consent. Seriously, I love these jackasses. <laughs> they are so much fun. Oh, there's and, a there's a drunk rape joke in there somewhere. <laughs> look, if you're a sovereign citizen, one of two things is going to happen to you in your life. You're going to go to jail no, no, on YouTube. No, no, that, no that's, that's guaranteed. One of two things is going to happen. You're going to get a window broke out of your car and or you're going to get tased. It's, it's just the way it you is. You know what? That's part of being – if you're a sovereign citizen, you need to buy a, you know a dozen – replacement windows for your car and you need to just like insurance yeah you just need to fortify yourself for uh riding the lightning because you're going to you know what i'm trying to think i do not maybe because it's not worth watching but most sovereigns i'm trying to think what percentage of sovereign citizen videos have i seen where the sovereign citizen ends up being tased and i think it's 90 percent um it depends, um, but I don't. I don't. If you're watching traffic stops, eh, maybe twenty percent of them get tased. Usually, they just get physically yanked out of their car, wrestled to the ground, and hooked up. Um, but when they're in like courthouses and they're in like you know federal buildings, yeah, generally they end up getting tased. Do we have a lot of any sovereign citizens around here? That's not a thing around here. Is uh, it? I actually. Um, I don't think it's real big around here, but my uh, 
sis, well, my sister-in-law who died a couple years ago, um, her oldest son was a sovereign citizen. Wait, wait, you mean the crazy one? The sister-in-law? This, yeah, the, my, my sister-in-law that was... The born, grifter? No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> I'm not no, editing that, it out. Too bad. That, that's not my sister-in-law. Oh, okay. That's oh, that's her friend. Yeah. Okay, um, go ahead. That's another podcast. But... Freeze okay. has this incredible okay. family. So Go my, ahead. My, my brother-in-law, you know, chopper pilot. In yeah, Vietnam, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, blah. That guy. His, his wife, born in Chicago, raised in L.A. in the '60s. Typical fucking hippie. Typical super douche liberal. Yeah. And you know, so yeah, her son's a sovereign citizen. Doesn't shock me in the least bit. You know. Yeah. But see, bottom line is, all sovereign citizens are deadbeats. They're deadbeats. They don't want to pay taxes. They they believe they believe you know Article Four or, or whatever of the Articles of Confederation. Newsflash, dick. No one goes by the, the Articles of Confederation. That's what they're anymore. they're signing the Articles Every, of Confederation. All their, the, all their whole basis is based on the Articles of Confederation, which no one follows. The we ratify we ratify the Constitution exactly. Oh, but get this. So they don't have to follow any laws. Laws do not apply to them. You're violating my constitutional rights. But all the laws, they don't have to follow any laws, but they but expect they all the laws to, to apply, apply to them. them. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. See see how this isn't going to work out for you? <laughs> it's very circular argument. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. So so let me, let me just go ahead and put a bookend on this podcast and we'll wrap it up. So just to be clear, Ching Chong makes bad guns. <laughs> No, we, makes bad we, we apparently we apparently hate sovereign citizens and we love the ATF and they're gonna be out here on the range shooting. We are gonna be so fucking popular. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and this wraps up the unknown episode of the John 1911 podcast. If you want to see any uh, pictures or videos or links to the things we discussed, go to our website, John1911.com. That's J-O-H-N-1911.com. Remember it's all about shooting guns and having fun. Everybody. Have a good day. See you later.